If you're a child at a theme park, the greatest risk to you may actually be your own parents. They've paid the money for you to get there. They want to see you having a good time. Yeah, you might not be tall enough for some of the rides, but with the help of some mega elevated shoes, you actually do meet the height requirement. That's all legal and safe and fun, right? No. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Today we're going to dive into the science behind why having bigger shoes doesn't actually mean that you're safer on a roller coaster and the issues with parents pushing their kids past that tiny limit and thinking nothing of it. In my previous video we talked about weight restrictions that are enforced at theme parks and why they're there and should manufacturers and theme parks be making a better effort. If you've missed it, it'll be either there or there. As promised, we're now going to be mentioning the height limitations and more specifically wearing bigger shoes and the issues with that. Or is it actually totally fine? Because everyone does it right and there's like, there's been no accidents. Or have there. In 2019, at the theme park Lightwater Valley, there was a terrible incident. A seven-year-old boy suffered life-changing injuries from falling off the Twister ride. The reports revealed that there were some issues with the seat belts. The one that concerns me the most is that there were height limits breached for that child. Good boy. Hello. Ah! So although he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, he was still able to squeeze through a gap between the bar and the car. Which having been on this ride, I can actually imagine. It's very dependent on the biggest person that you're sat with. I'm not saying that this specific case was because a parent tried to give their child bigger shoes and I'm not blaming this parent here but it does just show that, that those measurements are there for a reason and this wasn't just destructive to this boy and his family the park also had to pay some major fines obviously and I mean Lightwater Valley hasn't been the same since either well why do people do this then they must know that there's like health and safety regulations for a reason right why why would you risk it you probably wouldn't if you're watching this what if you're there with your two older siblings you're all at a theme park together and they manage to get on all the rides and you don't it, is, it would be tempting to give your child that extra little nudge so that they can go on and enjoy it if you want your kid to have a good day you don't want them to feel excluded you don't want them to feel like not good enough to fit on a ride you don't want them to have like fear of missing out because they might they might have just they might be the same age as everyone else, but just really tiny and short. Is that anyone watching that, that feels that way? I'm actually not thinking of anyone in particular, so I'm, I'm sorry if you felt called out there. And there's also ticket value, so a child that's taller actually gets more value for money. Although you, you will see some parks that actually charge ticket prices based on the height of the person going. Which I think is a really nice method. And there's also maybe a false perception of safety. So you, you would assume, well, that will never happen to me. Lots of other people do it. And that's the same reason people text and drive. Gosh, this is very serious. I promise to make it a little bit more lighter hearted in a moment. If you're in a shared car as well, your height may actually alter the center of gravity for everyone else. Well, it will alter the center of gravity for everyone else unless you're all the exact same. Again, the envelope that the engineers make for these rides assume a certain limit on each end from a low COG to a high one. Yeah, there you go. That was a funny bit. <laughs> Now that we've got the laughs and giggles over. Why is it a height restriction and not a weight restriction? You may be wondering. You can be Here's my cat who is actually bigger than the average child you'll find at Legoland. Then he stinks. No, I don't. So yeah, what is it about the height that is the measured thing to, to put limitations on then? Well, with height, there, there are a proxy to other things like sitting height, shoulder breadth, leg length, bone maturity and muscle strength, and head size. Which I, I am aware that someone's height won't really guarantee that. That could still be a very, very big scale. But again, it comes down to clearance envelopes that the ride manufacturers have calculated for it. And this is where the issue comes in. So elevating a child with sort of high sole shoes, maybe some demonias, that subverts those assumptions. So the actual risks here are that it reduces the restraint contact with the hips, thighs and shoulders, abdomen, which diminishes containment forces that keep riders seated during the high G loads. It could increase the likelihood that you will come into contact with beams and scenery due to this artificial height. And one that really scares me, submarining, I think it's called, where your torso is too small and it slips underneath a harness or 
lap bar during G-force or even some sudden stop maneuvers. that sat there thinking well i've never seen anything saying that we can't put giant shoes on our kids have a closer look maybe because operators specifically like merlin who own thought park Alta towers and chessington in the uk they have recently tightened their language about footwear oh my gosh my cat's pooing again they do explicitly ban heels and platforms and additional padding, whatever that might mean. So these shoes have to come off when you're getting measured by the big metal stick of doom. I used to think ride operators were like the Grim Reaper with those big measuring sticks. And like, let me on. But as I said in my last video, I am quite lucky to be pretty tall and gangly. So here's some engineering principles behind these restrictions. I mentioned a little bit about why it's not good and um, with a, th a couple of those risks there, but this is a deeper dive into the into the clearance envelopes. Do you remember the EN 13814? I mentioned this in the last video. This is like a document that, that creates guidelines for restrictions. So this is the patron clearance envelope and this assumes a 3D um, sort of bubble around each rider that is sat, sat on that train where they cannot have any objects flying into that in any point in their roller coaster experience. This one um, I would love to test at Blackpool Pleasure Beach to see how close things get because there are some real closely intertwining tracks aren't there. And it assumes a maximum torso and arm reach for a 95th percentile male. All right. Imagine you're designing a bike helmet for grown-ups. Now, grown-ups come in all shapes and sizes. Some are tall, some short, some have big heads, and some have small ones. When engineers say 95th percentile male, they mean we're designing this for a man who is bigger than 95 out of 100 men. So if you had lined up 100 men from smallest to biggest, the 95th percentile man would be the one of the biggest. Only five men would be bigger than him. Really? Yeah. All right, I'm not five. Are you a 95th percentile male? Well, this includes you then. And it includes a three inch safety margin as well, which is not a lot, is it? Because what if that tree grows three inches in two weeks? So when a child stands in what, 50 millimeter platform shoes, which doesn't sound like much, does it? That's like that-ish. Their arms and head height gain 50 millimeters of absolute height, but the restraint pivot doesn't. So that places elbows and heads like closer to scenery items. So weirdly, the shorter you are, the more likely you are to hit the objects around you. Kind of. It absolutely stinks in here. My cat has just dropped one. What about restraint zone geometry? I know that's what you were wondering. So lap bars and over the shoulder restraints were tested on the 95th percentile male, 5th percentile female, and 50th percentile six year old child. And the height limits are put in force where the 5th percentile child's, I nearly said Elvis. Bear with me for a minute. Pelvis rises far enough that a lap bar no longer rests above the anterior superior iliac crest, um, which is just the bony anchor, the bony anchor preventing submarining. So again, artificially raising your foot height lifts the pelvis height without increasing the torso length, which decreases the bar overlap across the abdomen and hips. Again, not a good thing to do. Something you might not have thought about is that they also take into account the g-force and also therefore the neck strength of the children that are riding. Again, EN 13814, my favorite book. Um, they have capped a 4G limit, eyes forward is what it's described as, for older children, but they actually um, request a review if children under 1.2 meters experience over 3G. And this is because their muscles or neck may not be able to take it as well as adults, which is interesting because I remember being all right as a kid and less all right now. Shorter riders already have lower neck musculature. Adding shoes does not change the mass distribution, but it can actually shift the head's center further above that restraint. Um, amplifying whiplash risk, for example, the saw the rides, Immelman loop. That one's for you, Dan Bannon, because I don't know the names of my inversions. Now, the parks do know that people's shoes will vary in sole depth. How deep is your sole? It's your sole. How deep is your sole? Alton Towers needs to know. Anyway, I'm 
are so cringe. I hope my husband's not watching me on the spy camera he's set up in the living room. All right. They do embed a small allowance of 15 millimeters ish for, for sole thickness, but any heels above three centimeters just obliterate this margin. So going back to that twister incident at Lightwater Valley, again, this wasn't because the parents gave them shoes that were too big, but if that could happen to someone who was just slightly mismeasured, like, can you imagine what's happening to people who were like deliberately cheating the system? I know it's tempting, don't do it. So what other policies do parks have then? So Walton Towers do measure guests in their shoes, they don't make you take them off, but they, because of that, they do allow a thicker margin. And they actually have a scheme where um, guest services can offer wristbands after they've checked your height, so you don't have to keep doing it every time. Thought Park insists that shoes must be flat, no high heels, padding or platforms is what they've said. And there's another reason why people at Thought Park may be having their kids wear giant shoes. Um, it's because they get free entry under 1.2 meters in some deals. Um, so yes, it's explicitly banned in that case for the financial reasons. Thank you, Thought Park Merlin. And there's no universal like wristband technique at Thought Park. Well, Legoland Windsor, that's full of loads of tiny little pudding people. Someone's stolen the um, the oak branch from Hex. It's not here. Is it you, Sean? Is it in the world of theme parks? Yeah, they check the height while kids are in their shoes as well. Um, but here's a lovely little fact for you. Um, you have to be wearing a shirt. <laughs> um, so Mion Shambhala I'm out. They have colour-coded wristbands too. Interestingly, they actually say no stilettos on water attractions. Duh, why? Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Because they've got such a big variety of rides there, they have very varying ride height restrictions. Uh, but the only thing they really mention is that high heels shouldn't be worn. And that's actually because of evacuation purposes. So you're not going to be like... Yeah, down the evacuation ramp. And if you're doing a track walk as well at Blackpool, don't wear heels because you won't be allowed to do it. Uh, so Lightwater Valley following the 2019 incident has just said no elevated footwear at all, which yeah, well done Lightwater Valley. Uh, Chessington World of Adventures. Yeah, same Merlin wording as Thorpe, flat shoes only. And there are height wristbands available as well. Here's some statistics about a hypothetical child we're gonna call I was going to use someone whose name I know. So I'm going to give you a completely hypothetical child who is below the height restriction normally, but when they wear um, 50 millimeter heels, they just pass. And their name is Robbie. They are 104 centimeters tall with a lap bar over their pelvis. <laughs> I nearly said Elvis again. <laughs> A neutral sole child will have full contact and there's a 20 to 30% decrease for Robbie in heels. The shoulder restraint clearance, that's optimal for a flat sole child, uh, but for Robbie, that would be 50 millimeters below the restraint pivot, which is optimal for an escape. Uh, what about headroom? Well, a flat sole child, they've got a good 150 millimeter margin uh, for the clearance. Well, Robbie's reduces to 100 millimeters, which you think, well, that's still fine. Yeah, but what about airtime? That will reduce even further if you're in hang time or airtime. Uh, what about the lateral whip for whiplash for a child's neck? That would be baseline for someone with uh, flat soled shoes. And for Robbie, it's, it's actually a 10% higher torque force on that neck. That is not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the animations that I'll be making to accompany this, sorry. What about bar slide ejection at negative G? Well, on a flat sole child, that's fine. For Robbie, there's a 230% chance increase that they will be ejected. So this is actually really bad, isn't it? That's with big shoes. So it actually doesn't make you the equivalent of a taller child. It greatly reduces the envelope. And if you actually don't follow the, like the manufacturer supplied footwear rules in theme parks, these parks are actually subject to like both criminal and civil liability, which is not good. If you want Merlin to be investing in more flat rides, let's not cost them any more money, right? So yeah, what are the parks doing? We did mention they've got the wristband system, uh, a visual inspection of footwear as well for people who are just above. Um, putting language on ticketing saying it's at the staff's discretion helps sort of clear up a lot of cases. Uh, you could have like the acrylic boards that have like a 500 millimeter, 500, and um, with like a bit of a tolerance on the bottom to show the shoe sizes. And if you're a parent and you want to avoid the accusations of taking your child on something with risky footwear, make sure their trainers are pretty like 
got thin soles, don't wear like big platform sandals. So in conclusion, um, the height restrictions aren't arbitrary barriers that are just made up to sell you different ticket prices. Uh, they've been like gathered from several biometric cases, uh, several biomechanical studies, uh, crash dummy tests. I bet you I'm going to edit in the one from SICK here. Um, but sadly, tragic case studies have also been one main reason that these regulations were in force. A cheeky little demonia platform shoe may seem pretty insignificant, but it does minimise the envelope greatly for that child's safety. It's not worth it. Please just wait for them to grow, like keep feeding them I don't know, is it broccoli? Milk? I don't know how to look after a child. I grew pretty strong and I drank milk every day, so... What do you guys think? Am I being too dramatic here? Or do you think I'm well within my right to, to put people in their places? Like, if you're a parent watching this look, I get it. It's probably really annoying that these you're like so close to a restriction, like one centimeter is not going to make a difference. There's already a window in there, uh, like an envelope that has been calculated better than anyone on that park probably is able to justify it away so don't risk it if you found this video interesting please consider subscribing or liking the video if you found it boring please give it a like so that i know that you didn't like it because i can't see the dislikes so you should that's the only way i'll know have you ever been rejected for a ride because of your height and what did it feel like and were you fuming and have you ever had to wear big shoes to get on rides? Let me know in the comments. I won't judge you. Okay, bye guys. I'm gonna do a double-handed wave because I like those. Thanks so much.